Good afternoon, everyone. I will speak slower in order to help the interpretation. Allow me to share my screen now. Can you see the presentation on the screen? Yes, we can. So, good afternoon once again. I am Leonardo Marcos da Silva, and I will be making a presentation of my work that has to do with the classification of newly registered domains through passive DNS. These are the names of the other authors who were part of this paper. I will be graduating in the final semester in Communications University. I work in the Department of Science and Computer Sciences and Statistics. In 2019, I started working for ACME on for research and cybersecurity, coordinated by a professor, and together with Nick VR. Nick funds the research. This is the agenda of my presentation. I will make a brief introduction to the topic. Then uh, we will develop the topic, the results obtained, and finally the conclusions. To start with the introduction, you all know how important the domain name systems are. This provides the matching between all the addresses, but there are also people with bad intentions who take advantage of the domain name systems to register, to do fraudulent records for malware attacks, for phishing, botnets, among other types of cyber attacks. According to the Internet Security, According to the Semitech 2019 report, one out of 10 URLs are considered malicious. So, see the proportion that this problem has. The way to mitigate these malicious domains is using block lists. The domains are then reported and included in lists so that they can be blocked in the future. However, it is important to detect, report, and include in the list and then block. So that is work that has to be done. But in the meantime, many other users are subject to such attacks. That is why machine learning came up as a solution in order to do immediate detection. The machine learning techniques for malicious domains work on two fronts. One is in the pre-registration area, which analyze the lexical characteristics of the domain. And then after that, the active and passive DNS. The passive DNS is the topic that I will be dealing with in this presentation. Passive DNS was proposed by Weimar in 2005. The purpose was to interrupt malware attacks. For this purpose, they use different recursive servers in order to register the response of different DNS servers. These are real responses. So the passive DNS is a significant resource to identify malicious domains. We also have the sniffers that are installed in the networks and do real queries and responses of the DNS service. Com this is compared to the DNS service. This is a difference between active DNS. And in addition to that, the possibility of enriching the data, data related to the ASNs, the WHOIS, and the geolocation. This also includes the possibility of collecting this in different places. Embora o DNS passivo pode não retratar toda a estrutura do de, é, Although the DNS, passive DNS, when you do aggregation, this tends to be a reliable data source, and it is possible to work with this. For the purpose of this paper, we also conducted seven additional papers that apply passive DNS to detect malicious domain. No. 
considerados é, mais recentes que aplicam técnicas robustas. Only few use machine learning. The most recent ones apply robust and scalable techniques. In addition to dealing with key imbalances baseados em árvores, é ter classe desbalanceada. E quando faz isso, por exemplo, One of the problems is to have imbalances when this occurs. O algoritmo tende sempre a classificar aquilo como legítimo. Para isso, o algoritmo tende a classificar isso como legítimo. Por isso, é necessário necessary to apply data balancing techniques such as sampling which will create subsets of data sets of data we create a superset for the sampling in that case replica of the data is created and from the papers from this work one uses a dns service which is authoritative Server, which is a data bank. Most of the others use a recursive server. The objective of this paper is that you can work with registered, registered sorry, domains. After three days, these are classified. This is collected in a DNS server. These are most efficient in terms of speed, in addition, in addition to using more recent techniques. Regarding the development of this work, all the DNS traffic was collected in authoritative TLD server. According to this, this guarantees a greater global visibility. This last 12 months, it began in March 2020, and these are entries registered between March 2020 and December 2020. But the period is greater than the register interval because many malicious domains take some time until they are detected for the first time. So that is why we established this longer period of time to start to do the collection, data collection. Then we use Entrada. This is a high performance data streaming that analyzes the entire network traffic. This is done within very few seconds of time. This will is in charge of cleaning and enriching as well as compacting the data. The data can also be enriched in some of the columns, such as the country code based on the database of MaxMind. One of the things to highlight is that it changes the file format. When you do the conversation, this reaches 32% of the files. After collecting the data, algoritmo de aprendizagem de máquina de ponta, como o XGBush, que é uma computação paralela e distribuída. XGBoost that can be executed from a common computer or a uh, light like GBM, which is highly efficient, scalable, high speed, use of memory, and it is support learning. With regards to the methodology, we can divide it in two stages. The first one is the preparation of the model, validation, tests, and the model introduction. That model already uses untagged data. I will now speak about the diagram of the system and the different stages. We begin with the preparation of the model. We first have the passive DNS that it will collect the data of the recorded domains based on the list that we were provided. Then we select 
the data for three days after the first query, we extract characteristics, we label the data based on the block list with the malicious domains. And all of the domains that are not malicious were considered legitimate. And we do the balance of the data, we train the model, and then we test the model. So you're going to train the model, and then you are going to record it. We have about, well, close to 90,000 legitimate domain and only 1,000 malicious domains. That pie chart shows the proportion where close to 1% is the malicious domains. And here we have the cluster centroids, the sample for the legitimate. And then we are going to remove those samples that are closer to the centroids. In the minority class, we're going to generate synthetics and when we do the class balance we have a more similar proportion as we can see here we now the production model we collect the for three days the passive dns for registered domains after the first query we aggregate we extract characteristics then the data are not labeled and they will tell us whether it's legitimate or malicious based on the model. And finally, we will have a report where it will show if it's legitimate or malicious and the real features. The results that we obtained, as you can see on screen, we have a comparison of all the algorithms that were used. AUC media that will show that the area under the ROC that's used for an accurate prediction, whether that domain can distinguish between malicious or legitimate. These two algorithms reached the better results and they were applied for the initial initial numbers and iterations, and then the method will try to find the best parameters for the learning curve, the learning rate in order to enhance the performance of the model. Here we have the decision tree, which is the one that had the worst results in terms of our AUC, because we are not using the ensemble methods and the other boosting methods that are used by the other algorithms. In AUC shows a light GBM algorithm with an average AUC of 0 0.9673, 1.8 seconds. And that turned out to be little time because we don't have much data. But when we are large with, we are working with a large volume of data, the light GBM ends up uh, being really more useful over time. We use by Haitian optimization with seven parameters with the light GBM algorithm, 50 initial points and 500 iterations. We have the optical curve of the model, the ROC curve, I'm sorry. And this shows variation between one curve or another based on the training of the model during testing. We see how relevant the different characteristics are. These three ones are more important. Days to collection where malicious domains are recorded and then are used uh, like the legitimate ones, as we can see in our database. In addition to malicious domains, they use low values to show IP changes, especially when there is a domain attack and that really affects the TTL change characteristic. Another characteristic is the response of the DNS, which was variable between malicious and legitimate domains. Another characteristic is the number of queries malicious domains had, well, particularly phishing, a high number for a short time interval and characteristics like different country names and ASN numbers that were different. The location of the malicious domains where they decide to make queries in different parts of the world 
machines that are affected in different locations, and that's why we have variations in the ASN showing that the IP prefixes are changing to make it harder to trace the location. Speaking about the model validation, we collected data for eight months. We started in January, use the domains that were recorded from January to end of March. With this, we were we generated a matrix. And here we see that the algorithm predicted that it was malicious, 335, and 52 for the real class or the legitimate domain. So here we have the false positives that actually when the algorithm said it was malicious, it turned out to be legitimate. And it's actually quite high, almost 10,000. And I will explain why in a minute. So we can have the, the rate of the true positives. It is the malicious algorithms classified correctly, it's 0.8656 is the false positive, and 0.3471 is the number of malicious domains that were misclassified. This is an interesting result for these malicious domains, but as you can see, and as I said before, we have too many false positives. This is probably due to sampling and the synthetic data that ended up favoring the, the, the model to misclassify these, these uh, domains. So the conclusions of the study is that it was possible to present a system that classifies newly registered domains. 0 0.9373 is the average uh, testing of the trained model. The real, the, the accurate or the true positive is 0 0.6%. And the characteristics of the passive DNS with enriched data in the input for the collection was done through a TLD authorized server in a 12 month period. And we also used uh, balance, uh, class balance techniques in order to enhance the performance of the model. Here we can also see that it is important to use a TLD because it can detect malicious domains very quickly, it can identify them and mitigate or prevent for more users to fall victims of these malicious domains or companies suffering different harm because of, of the malicious domain. So what are the next steps? Well, we should continue studying these to avoid synthetic data generation and also uh, um, considering the high positive rate and unsupervised learning could be an ally as we can find malicious domain that had not been identified before and we can increase the training data. We can also have incremental training to fight these misclassifications of the model and we will be able to produce more knowledge over time. And finally, it is important to monitor the domains over a longer period of time and in the future we should continue monitoring domains in the second, third and fourth week in addition to the first couple of days to have a full month of monitoring of the domains. We need to have two day classifiers in the first query or after the first query to, con to, to start classifying. I would like to thank Nick Biar that is funding this investigation and the Ponto Nest process 2764 in 2018. Here you have the references that we use for our study. And there are many articles that, that we have used and there on screen, you can see the names. Finally, I want to thank you all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want to send any questions to me, I'm open to answering any questions that you might have. And there you can see my contact information. Thank you.
We do have a question, but let me encourage everyone that has questions to really submit your questions, not only in the Q&A section, but you can also request the mic here in the Montevideo Hall if you have any questions. Leandro? Yes, we do have a question from Hugo Salgado in the Q&A that reads, how long does it take for a malicious domain to be registered until we can really detect it using this technique, supposing that a traffic capture is done in real time? Great. Okay. When the, the data piece arrives, it's captured, and we have five minutes until it's inserted into the database. After that time, we are going to classify it daily. And in this case, it's done instantaneously. So it's five minutes tops. And the classifier already shows a result. It's about 10 minutes. It, it, so in about 10 minutes, you can already have that detection process. I don't know if I'm answering your question. OK, great. Let's see if we can have. Any other questions? Maybe in the panel? No questions? Okay, so let me encourage everyone to submit your questions in the Q&A panel so Leandro can answer them. I'm sure he's more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Bien. 